transfer functions for single out input, single output systems. Um, transfer functions are one of the main types of system representations that we like to use in system dynamics, system engineering in general. Uh, what are some other types of system representations that we've come up with so far over the last several months? So linear graphs is one way to represent a system, right? Um, we were able to write a state model, state space model, A, B, C, D matrices. Yeah, uh, block diagram, that's another one. Um, we also had input-output differential equations. And we had operators as well, which are related to the block diagram, right? So transfer functions, one of the last types. So we're getting, getting a full picture here. So recall the single input, single output ODE for an nth order system with input U and output Y, which is this expression, which kind of looks scary, but it's really just a bunch of coefficients A on this left-hand side multiplied by time derivatives of Y, our output equals a bunch of coefficients b on the right hand side times time derivatives of u, our input. So our output and our input are y and u. Taking time derivatives of them. Um, this is like, for instance, a second order system we represented this way. And the standard form has the zeta and omega n, damping ratio and natural frequency. We talked about those a lot last semester and, and all that. So. Um, so we remember this, and we, we learned how to solve this. We already knew coming into the class, um, differential equations taught us how to solve these equations using the method of undetermined coefficients, right? Homogeneous solution, particular solution, mash them together, initial conditions. We learned about superposition that relates to these as well. So this is something that we are familiar with. Um, and these transfer functions for CISO systems are very closely related to these, okay? And there's a really, is a really easy way to map between a transfer function representation and a, a CISO ODE, an input-output CISO ODE, okay? So we'll learn how to do that in this set of notes. Let the input be of the form, and we're going to remove this restriction in subsequent chapters, but uh, the input u of t is equal to some complex amplitude u of x, or sorry, u of s, um, here, multiplied by the scalar exponential e to the st, where s is some complex number, okay? And we often represent that complex number as a real part sigma plus j times an imaginary part omega. All right. So we're going to say, what if our input's of this form? And we're going to find that it's really easy to derive an expression that we can define as our transfer function. Okay. And in subsequent uh, lectures, we'll discover that the Laplace transform uh, can also be used to define a transfer function, but it's kind of easier to define it this way first, and we can do a lot of things with exponential inputs, so we'll start with that, okay? Um, also, sort of to give away one of the ahas in the class, this s, this complex number s, is going to be equivalent to the Laplace transform variable s. Even though we haven't yet defined Laplace transform to Laplace variable s, it's going to be equivalent to it. So we suggestively name it s. And just like we suggestively named the derivative operator capital S, and it's related to this little s as well, um, they have essentially the same function, same role. Um, even though they're mathematically different objects, effectively you can treat them kind of the same. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of this is going to look really familiar. You guys are going to be like, how many, how many times are we going to re-slice the same pie <laughs> in different ways? Um, it just so happens that thinking about it in terms of different ways of slicing it can be useful sometimes. So we'll try to learn all the ways and then try to know when to apply the different ones. So uh, the method of undetermined coefficients yields the assumed form of the particular solution of the equation to be this. Because remember that the form of the input determines what the form of the solution is going to be for the method of undetermined coefficients. And so what we do is we say, OK, well, the particular solution must be of this form. Some complex amplitude y of s times e to the st. You may recall from your differential equations class that the easiest inputs on your right-hand side to deal with are exponentials. Um, they're very easy to deal with because, well, the exponential is very fundamental to differential equations anyways. It's sort of the foundational way that we solve a lot of differential equations, especially linear differential equations. Um, OK, so y of s is unknown. And we're going to plug in to check to see, is this, is this a solution? Like we, like we always do, right? We always do this when we use the method of undetermined coefficients. So I'm not doing something new here. I'm actually just doing something old. I'm just saying, what if our input was an exponential with a complex number in front of it, which we typically would be thinking in terms of real numbers. So complex numbers adds a little bit of a dimension to it we haven't seen, but it's actually, it actually works pretty much the same as it does with the real amplitude. So we plug it into star. So star was this IO differential equation. So we plug in our y, and we plug in our u. So we said u is of this form here. So we plug in u. And we also plug in y, what we assume to be our solution. And the left-hand side becomes all these co co constants again, these coefficients, a, multiplied by these time derivatives of the expression that we plugged in for y, right? So plugged it in. And we also plugged in u as well. And what we get out is the following. Let's consider the first the first one here. So we have a n, and then does y of s depend at all on time? No. It's a function of s. So it, when we take the derivative with respect to time, it's just a constant, right? So, and this happens on every single term, y is a constant. So let's just right now say, OK, we're going to factor y of s out of every term, and we're going to put it up here on the front. So I'm not going to write it in each term. So what's remaining? We have the nth time derivative of e to the st. Okay. What is, what is the nth time derivative of e to the st? 1 Uh, so it's just chain rule, right? So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x dx, right? And so you have to take that derivative of the exponent as well. So uh, the derivative of st is just s. Time derivative of st is just s. So we multiply this by s for every time derivative here. So we're taking n time derivatives. And so we have s to the n. And then it's going to be times e to the st. But once again, e to the st is going to show up in every term. So we'll factor that out too. So what's left is, now the next term is going to be very similar. a n minus 1, s to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to a1 
s to the 1 plus a0 doesn't have an s because there was no time derivative on that one. And all of that is multiplied by y of s e to the st, which is in every single term. Everybody tracking on that? Okay. On the right hand side, what was there a question? Sorry, I heard a, a mumble and I couldn't tell if that was a question. Okay. So the right hand side is actually almost the same, right? We're going to have BM multiplied by the time derivative of u of s e to the st. Once again, u of s is a constant with respect to time, so we can factor that out. And this time derivative of e to the st uh, is just going to yield an s to the mth power times, it's going to be e to the st, right? But once again, e to the st shows up in every term, so we'll factor that out as well. So bm plus b m minus 1, s to the m minus 1, plus dot dot dot, b1, s plus b0, times u of s, which was in every term, right? My u's really suck today. Wow. Still not very good. I give it a b. Okay, e to the st. So it turns out that my, my sarcasm is a little too subtle right before I go to bed at night. Because I, I tweeted out something <laughs> um, last night that was, it was just, yeah, it was a joke. It was a joke. I, I was just being sarcastic. I said, um, I was skeptical at first, but but uh, uh, I was skeptical at first, but I'm really coming around to Trump or something like that. Um, uh, I, these first couple weeks has really made me appreciate him or something, something like that. And then it's so funny because a couple people uh, recognized it as sarcasm, and then a couple people totally did not. And so that was fun, um, having that response. So. My mom really liked it. And I was like, no, no, you, no, that wasn't what I meant. Um, <laughs> Christmas was fun. OK. So uh, <laughs> so we've, we've found something that we haven't quite gotten a final result from our analysis yet, but looking for the solution, um, or at least starting to look for a solution to this problem, has led us to something that, you know, it's kind of interesting. You can factor a y out of this side, you can factor a u out of this side. The e the st is actually cancel, right? And what we get is this relationship between y of s and u of s, and it's related to these polynomials of s, okay? And that allows us to make this definition. So the system transfer function, h of s, notice we're using h again, suggestively. Remember the h operator? Yeah, yeah the system transfer operator? Well, guess what? It's very closely related to the system transfer function. I know, blowing your minds right now. Uh, the system transfer function h of s is the output complex amplitude y of s divided by the input complex amplitude u of s. Okay, so that's just a definition. So we're going to make this definition. h of s is defined, which is what this triple equals is denoting. It's defined as y of s divided by u of s. And if that's our definition, 
of our transfer function, then we can look at star star and solve for it pretty easily, right? So y over u, we just divide both sides by u of s. So we have y over u. And then divide both sides by this polynomial here, right? And we have the transfer function. So from star star, we have that h of s is equal to the input polynomial bm s to the m plus bm minus 1 s to the m minus 1 plus all the way up to b1 s plus b0 divided by a n s to the n. So this is the output polynomial a n minus 1 s to the n minus 1 plus b1 or sorry a a1 s plus a0. So Let's say that we wanted to know what the transfer function was. And we knew what the input-output differential equation was. So way back up here. Say we had this, and we wanted to write the transfer function. Would that be difficult to do? So if you have the input-output differential equation, you know what all these coefficients are, right? The A's and the B's, they were all given. They're like 5, 3.2, pi divided by 17. Yeah, so th these are uh, all known constants. And S, uh, so S is just S. This is a function of S, so you don't need anything for S. And then S raised to the power, all you have to know is what the power of the, of the derivatives are. So if you have a second derivative, you're going to have an s squared. So if you have 5 times y double prime or double dot or whatever, so the second time derivative, then you would have 5 s squared in the, in the uh, denominator, right? So if it was y, that would be in the denominator. The u terms would be in the numerator. Okay, so we say oftentimes, we'll say this, we'll say, we use this terminology. The transfer function is the output divided by the input. Okay, what we mean by that is the transfer function is the complex amplitude of the output divided by the complex amplitude of the input. <coughs> But we have this tendency to just abbreviate that and say it's just output over input. So th this is really easy. I mean, it's just another way of writing it. And I, and I um, we're going to define a couple things about the transfer function uh, that are just going to be familiar to us. And we weren't, aren't going to really use it to its full capacity until we get into the last chapter of the book. Um, but we're going to use it in the coming chapters uh, as a system representation. We aren't going to see its true power until the, the last two chapters of the book. So there's, there's a chapter on uh, sinusoidal inputs, and that's chapter 14, I think. And that's going to be uh, where we'll start to see the power of it, and we'll see a lot more of the power of it in chapter 15 on frequency response. But for now, it's just going to be yet another system representation. Okay. And you'll have to trust me that it's useful. Um, I would say it's probably, it's, it's a favorite. People really like transfer functions. Um, I think that a lot of folks like it because they don't have to deal with differential equations. Notice that this representation doesn't have any derivatives in it. Pretty nice. 
Um, not that we need to be scared of them, but yeah. And what we're going to see is that S is actually the Laplace transform variable. And we can use this, although we won't do a lot of it in this class, we can use this to solve the system as well. Um, we don't focus on that in this class, but we will do it. Um, you'll have some homework on it. So we often represent this in a block diagram as follows. So we've got an input coming in, which is u of t equals this complex amplitude u of s, e to the st, goes into the block, into the system. And this system can be represented by the transfer function, which is just the output, complex amplitude, remember, uh, divided by the input, once again, complex amplitude. Uh, so output over input. And then the, the output, so this is the particular solution. And that is important to remember um, that this is the particular solution. And it does not take into account initial conditions. It's y of s e to the s t. Okay. Now, it is also true that y of s from this relationship here, it's just an algebraic relationship. Y of s is equal to h of s times u of s, right? So we can actually just plug in h of s times u of s e to the st. And this form here is actually, um, it's actually a pretty important form as well. You see that the, the output is just the transfer function multiplied by the input. So not only is the transfer function you know, defined as y over u, but sometimes we use the transfer function to give us what the output is, which is just the input multiplied by the transfer function. So the transfer function is this object that takes an input and gives you the output. It behaves as the system, because it's the system representation. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice representation. For now, we're just going to focus on constructing system transfer functions and learning a little bit about their properties. Um, and then later on, we're going to unlock the reason why we're, we're doing this. And I, and I don't like to do things that are unmotivated um, yet, but I, I do think that sometimes you have to know how it works before you see why it's important. Um, so we're, we're going to get there um, in not too many weeks. So don't, don't despair if you feel like this is just another thing and you don't know what you're going to use it for. You will use it for some good stuff. So let's do an example. The circuit shown has the input output ODE, this. Now, this isn't how we would construct the model, right? When we construct a model with linear graphs, we typically would end up with a, since this is a second order system, what, how, what is the, uh, how many state variables would we need? Two. Two state variables to represent it. So two state variables. And our A matrix would be a what by what? Two by two. And if, so I say, what is the transfer function between Vs and Vl? Vs is clearly an input. It's the source. And Vl is clearly the output, then, because a transfer function always takes an input to an output. Okay. So we want to know the transfer function between Vs and Vl. So that means that VL is the output. So if we were going to write a state model for it, we would find that our C matrix had w what dimensions? Well, it's definitely a 1 by something because our out we only have one output, right? So it's a 1 by 1 by 2, right? Because it, it's 1 by the number of state variables, because it has to multiply the x vector. So 
C would be a 1 by 2. So that's how we would represent it if we were going to do this model from scratch. Some other folks who take another approach would find it easier to model with a second order system, which is totally valid. Um, and we could come up with this system as well. We previously learned to do that with the system transfer operator, right? We learned how to go from a state space model to an input output differential equation like this using that C S I minus A inverse B plus D formula, right? Remember that formula? Hammered on that at the end of last semester so that you guys would be able to go from a state space model to an input output differential equation model. So let's just say that we did that and we got <coughs> this representation here. And we wanted to know what the transfer function is. So the transfer function between VS and VL. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to try to, to try to work this out. I think that there's, there's actually no work that needs to be done. I think you guys could just write down the answer. Um, so I want to give you guys a minute to think about it. Output coefficients. Right. So, 
It is still output over input, complex amplitude. It's just that in order to solve for the output over the input, you have to use the coefficients from the right hand side on the top and the left hand side on the bottom. Part of it. Yeah, it's Anybody else? How's it going here? Would you like help? Do you, would you like help? Yeah? So, I want to identify S to the M here to come from no, the right hand is, side. In this case, so, that's going to be the right hand side here. So, our BM is going to be L. And then our S is going to be raised to the second power because it's the second power. So, the right, so, the numerator of our transfer function is going to be L S squared. And then we have no more coefficients, so these are all zero. Mm -hmm. And then the denominator, we have L and then S squared again. Plus, but this R, one, this one's just S, which is the first time. This is plus, we want to see this is just a constant. Yeah. Sure. Okay, back row, how are we doing? I think I got it. You couldn't cancel because uh, it's just all that just all one. So if we write P is I mean, you could cancel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't exactly cancel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you just leave that form. That form is fine. So the right side of the equation is the input. So I do upside down one. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have the inverse here. Because it always wants to know what the field is. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Because it always says it's not going to show itself. Okay. So let's look so at this is your output right here. This is your whole mm -hmm. formula. So so C by C by D by N. So we need to identify so so which term is the right one. Which term is the right one. Which term is the right one. Multiplied by the D. So the D is the right hand side. So we are you can still see L is the right hand side. And time is the right hand side. L times L times S raised to the power of the derivative. L S. That's the one. So what? L is the one. 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 And then plus one of the C. And then whatever. And then plus one of the C. 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 I'm usually good about Oh, that would be L squared. Or S squared. L S squared. What it comes out to is that would be the. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we can solve the output. Y over over U is the output over the input, right? And we solve 
So it's just it's just because we saw for it. I didn't have um, so the output over the one is equal to and uh, this ratio three eight somehow got it. Yeah, it's I mean, you can tell this thing. But it's really just it's really just what it's equal to. We saw it's whatever. Yeah, it's just it's really just what it's equal to. Yeah, it's really just what it's equal to. Yeah, it's really just what it's equal to. Yeah, it's really just what it's equal to. I got basically all the vectors and like I just got some left. So I'm going to take out my playing as my buddy named Ray. So you could get A, B, and Y. So you could get D. If you wanted to know what A is, you could get A, B, and Y. So I'm going to say what you see. And I'm going to say what you see. And I'm going to say what you see. And I'm going to say what you see. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just because it's on the other side. Okay, so I think that everyone's got it. Uh, let's go ahead and, and write down the solution. So, H of S is equal to, we'll use the star star formula right here, and we'll identify that the B's come from the right-hand side, okay? And the right-hand side is this. And there's only one term on the right-hand side. It's L times the second time derivative of the input, right? And the second time derivative means it's S squared to the second power. If it was the fourth time derivative, it would be L S to the fourth. Remember, this is a function of s, so we don't need to get rid of s. s will be in the solution. Now, we also have a denominator that comes from the left-hand side. These are the a's in our formula. Um, we have l from this term times s to the what power? Plus r times what? S. s. Plus, what's the last term? Yeah, 1 over C. Good. And there's no S there. You could say S to the 0, which is just 1. Uh, or you could just recognize that there's no derivative on this term, so there's no S. OK. Whew. We got it. That should be the last question on the term. Yeah? Oh, we're just getting started. We're just playing, we're just playing softball right now. Just getting started. I didn't quite mean for it to sound that way. That was, that was. I didn't mean to be derogatory towards softball. Um, I think it's an expression. Now we're gonna play hardball. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I apologize. I apologize if that offended anyone. <laughs> Maybe I don't have to anymore. <laughs> Am I like? Am I? Is it okay now? No. Can I just air anything that I want and no. just be cool with that? Try the Twitter first. See what <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just to clarify, I think softball is a great sport, and St. Martin's <laughs> has a great <laughs> softball team. I did not mean it in the sense of the sport. Men in the sense of the expression, which probably has roots in sexism. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I now realize that and recant fully. <laughs> I would be a bad politician. <laughs> Just saying. Um, yeah, that's true. I don't know. Maybe it would be okay now. Maybe I could just. Just like go, get out there and just. King now. That's what I meant. The more out there you are, the better you seem to do. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it didn't used to be that way. It just is now, suddenly that way. Suddenly it doesn't matter. Anyways, whatever. <sighs> you guys know me. I'm not hating on any groups up here. I don't know. Maybe you don't. You don't know me. Okay. We're going to start this next lecture. Uh, it's really not that bad. Um, 
system poles and zeros. Recall the single input, single output ODE for an nth order system with input U and output Y is this. We just, we just talked about this, so you're probably not surprised to see that this is the case. Um, I'm 